Today we're going to be multiplying rational numbers, and this video includes both decimals and fractions. It's that easy. Basically, all you have to do is multiply like, like normal. When you see those mixed numbers, change them to improper fractions. And for decimals, don't forget to count the number of decimals behind the decimal. Include the same number of numbers behind the decimal in your answer. And determine the sign based on the rules we learned for integers. So that should be pretty easy. It's all everything you've done before, just combining a couple of things together. So let's start with 0 0.5 times negative 0 0.2. So I'm just going to do multiplication like normal. 0 0.5 times 0 0.2. 5 times 2 is 10. Carry my 1. And of course that's 0. I can do the other one and get more zeros there as I go down to the next row. And I come up with 0, 1, 0. Now how many numbers do I put behind the decimal? Well, there's one number there, one number there, so that means I should have two numbers behind the decimal. So my answer is 0 0.10. But wait, I have to check the sign. I have a positive times a negative, and I know a positive times a negative is a negative. So negative 0 0.10. Yes, folks, it's that easy. Well, what if I have fractions and I have 3 fourths times 1 third? Well, we could do this problem two ways. One is to do just multiply straight across, and we get 3 over 12. And we would have to simplify that. Don't forget, this is going to be negative because it's a positive times a negative. And when we simplify it, we end up with negative 1 over 4. If you're doing these problems, this should be pretty easy to you. But wait, is there another way we can do that that makes it a lot easier to do? Sure. We can simplify it before we multiply. So let me show you how to do that real quickly. You'll end up with the same answer. It's just simplifying before you multiply. You look for a common factor that's in both the numerator and the denominator. In this case, we have a 3 in the numerator and a 3 in the denominator. So that's simply basically dividing both the numerator and the denominator by 3. Now, what's 1 times 1? Well, we get 1. What's 4 times 1? We get 4. And yes, it's still a positive times a negative, so it's negative 1 fourth. Okay, and this one, remember I told you, when you saw a mixed number, change it to an improper fraction? So let's do that. 5 times 2 is 10, plus the 1 on top is 11, so we have negative 11 halves. And then we're going to multiply it by negative 2 thirds. Okay, and remember this is multiplication, not subtraction. So, do they have any common factors? Well, yes, I can take out a 2 out of both the numerator and the denominator, and replace those with 1's because it's dividing both the numerator and denominator by 2. In this case, I'm going to end up, well, a positive times, or excuse me, a negative times a negative is a positive, so my answer is going to be positive. And then 11 times 1 is 11, and 1 times 3 is 3. So I would get 11 thirds, positive 11 thirds. You could change that if you needed to, to, an imp or to a mixed number, and you would have 3 and 2 thirds. Once again, it would also be positive. 